Hello, today is Thursday, November 29th, 2018. I'm Joe Schmidt with TC2, and this is Staying Connected. On today's podcast, we're going to look at some interesting developments regarding the use of Internet transport services for the Enterprise WAN. It may surprise you, but global demand for Internet transport is skyrocketing due to changes in network edge technology, greater use of cloud services that don't necessitate backhauling all traffic to your data center, and just generally greater adoption of the hybrid WAN. I'm joined by two of my TC2 colleagues, Mark Sheard, who's based in London, and Keith Cook, who is based in Atlanta. I guess we can call today's session the bandwidth trade-off because, as I mentioned, we've discovered some interesting developments and we want to share with you some of the trends that we've seen when benchmarking and sourcing Internet transport for the WAN and give you some ideas that you can use. Okay, Keith, how about if you kick off the discussion? Sure. Thanks, Joe. And yes, here's something that I noticed recently which really drives home the point. I was analyzing a client's services as part of renegotiating their deal for WAN services. The client's internet transport pricing was about two years old, and it consisted of mostly lower bandwidth connections, say 10 megabits or less. That in itself is funny, because in the earlier days of my career in the mid-90s, a full T1 was considered a huge amount of bandwidth. Anyway, generally speaking, these rates for internet transport, in this case the lower size broadband connections, not dedicated internet, were still reasonably competitive. But when I compared the rates to our deal database in this review, I discovered that many locations could now have broadband connections of 8 or 10 times the existing bandwidth for only maybe 20-25% more of the cost. So, I think what you're saying is that two years ago, your client could buy a 10 meg broadband circuit for, let's say, 100 bucks, and today they can pay, say, $125 and have a 100 meg broadband circuit provisioned? In terms of the general trend, that's exactly right. In fact, actually, I'll just jump in. The, the trend there is a common phenomenon. Um, we've seen the cost of bandwidth dropping as time goes by. But the pace of the increase of bandwidth now for the same or lower cost appears to accelerate it. And whether this is actually for dedicated internet access circuits at the highest bandwidths, so here we're talking hundreds of megabits or upwards into gigabits, or lower bit speed business broadband type circuits. So these, these are the ones that are based on consumer type access technology, so like fiber and XDSL. And even for MPLS, we've seen price drops, and they've in part been fueled and driven by the competitive environment that SD-WAN uh, as an edge technology has created, and out of that, the plethora of transport aggregator options that it's promoted. So enterprises need to develop an effective strategy to navigate through what is a quickly changing landscape to maximize their financial return, you know, their telecoms dollars. And this doesn't look as if it's going to slow down. So for me, I think this involves two key thoughts. Establishing the right bandwidth mix, that trade-off as you transition into SD WAN, and even actually if you use, you know, a traditional hybrid WAN infrastructure, which some of our more sophisticated enterprises of old are still doing, and they want to sweat those solutions, so that you can increase the amount of internet transport in the mix to gain that the maximum bandwidth trade-off, but also access to, as Joe mentioned, to cloud technologies more readily, etc. And second, so that you position yourself to keep aligned with that that falling price per megabit trend. Um, that really doesn't show any sign of abating. So how does an enterprise go about establishing the right network transport mix? Uh, Well, the podcast's not quite long enough to cover all of that, but I think I'd really focus on key factors. It's driven by the state of your current network architecture, your current suppliers, and your contractual commitments. So no way you're starting is, is so important. Then obviously factors like the nature of your business can really affect it. You know, if you've got a, a retail emphasis versus a, a Six Sigma type manufacturing environment, you know, they're very different in terms of the mix of the uh, types of circuit and the bandwidth that you might require. Then your application bandwidth requirements are increasingly driving, again, enabled by SD-WAN. But they're driving the solutions that can actually be used by you, and that really comes down to the access to cloud technologies, um, what applications you're using, which cloud providers. And then geography is critical because the solutions available for large enterprise customers vary tremendously, the difference between LATAM and Europe or Asia-Pac and North America, for example. A key output of all of this, though, and when you're looking at those factors, trying to take stock of where you are, is trying to look at where you want to get to. 
what are you going to do in terms of your future state network? One of the things is important to this is this is a target that you're setting, and it's critical that you set this target, but it doesn't need to have all the I's and the T's crossed. You know, it's, a, it's about giving you somewhere to aim to that is working on that 80-20 principle. If you have that vision, that target of where you want to get, go to, it's going to provide an important framework for you to execute on your bandwidth acquisition. Yes, excellent, Mark. Thanks. I like to call this analogy the three-legged stool. You need to consider all three legs of this stool to make sure it is usable. One leg is where you're going with your network's edge solution. Most commonly, the future is SD-WAN, although in the short term, it might mean sticking with your traditional router-based solution. Architectural decisions here directly affect your network transport decisions. And we do advise clients on this, as well as SD-WAN, but that's not the focus for today's conversation. What we're talking about today is the other two legs of the stool that relate to the transport itself. These are where the dollar savings will come from compared to the current architecture. The first is your residual MPLS requirement. You're likely looking at a reduced inventory in terms of the number of circuits, typically maintaining bandwidth as is, but not always. With your incumbent supplier, you could well be reducing the spin not just from the unit rate reductions, but also from a smaller volume of services. And, often different than in the past, during any new contract discussions, there's typically a lower prospect for organic growth and consumption to backfill the book of business and the revenues to the supplier that are going to decline. This presents new challenges in how you secure the best deal possible. Maintaining flexibility to accommodate future bandwidth migration to Internet is crucial. More than ever, competitive process is still going to be the most effective approach. But make sure you have the runway, in other words, time, in your current contract to deliver a credible RFP or at least a robust renegotiation with your incumbent. Okay, so that's two legs of the stool. The first being the edge strategy and the second being what to do with your installed MPLS service. So what about the third leg, which I presume is the internet transport itself? Yeah, you're spot on there, Joe. It is. It's the internet transport. Sometimes it actually gets less attention than it deserves, thinking it's straightforward. You just go out and buy the service. Most often, we are helping clients create a mix of suppliers to leverage the different characteristics that these suppliers have. For example, carriers and aggregators come in many different flavors. What you can see, and this is, is a truism, that compared to a single supplier providing all your internet transport services, a portfolio of suppliers can give you materially lower cost. And sometimes you know, customers or enterprises can lose sight of that. What's also key is a number of suppliers can give you essential coverage with a different mix and availability of internet transport options. And there I'm talking about dedicated internet access versus business broadband in its various flavors. What you do see is that often one supplier cannot cost effectively give you the total coverage that you require, particularly for large enterprises. Simply, sometimes they cannot supply certain types of circuits where you want them. What you've got to do in picking a portfolio of suppliers is pick the right balance between cost coverage and then partner management. And what happens if you simply pump for ad hoc acquisition, rather, on a circuit by circuit basis, you can initially get the lowest cost. That's also true. But going forward, this will be at the expense of not being able to capitalize on the more for less trend that we've just outlined, where you're getting more bandwidth for a lower or the same cost. What you're also going to have is added complexity in the management that can make things extremely difficult. And now this isn't just a contract management, which sometimes is the single focus. It can also be for ordering, upgrades, operational support issues, billing, financial management, tracking what you've actually got where, circuit information and visibility for re-procurement. So there's a number of things that can suddenly get out of hand and you get lost in the all too difficult category. And what this could do is quickly see you lose the benefit initially gained through the, the initial cost reduction. And what you lose is the ability to refresh your inventory in a timely way. And that's going to become even more important. The, the pace of increased data demand is not going to go away. So ideally, you should plan on establishing a handful of successful relationships with suppliers as your go-to providers. And recognizing that, that you may also have to have a few single circuit exceptions in the mix. This might be in a particular country where for one location, it's best to just go out and procure it separately because of the cost differentials, which can be significant. These go-to providers, if you use them properly, will actually give you, I like to call it, a level of perpetual price performance to get some alliteration in there. Continual competition as your internet transport consumption is ramped up and refreshed. In fact, as your bandwidth mix changes to meet the future and likely 
growing bandwidth requirements. Indeed, the best way to get the right supplier and bandwidth mix is through an RFP with the express intent of selecting several partners of choice. The RFP is focused purely on Internet transport with deep analysis of initial costs against your inventory and service coverage as the primary differentiators. However, the competitive RFP for selecting your partners will also give you the opportunity to make sure you establish some robust arrangements in the contract with many areas that differ from those for MPLS. It's also important to get consistency across these different suppliers, but also try to keep their unique standard offerings in play because there are some. This is possible as this market matures. I could give you a long list of areas that you want to address in your final contracts and sourcing initiative, but here are just a few. The art of the possible for SLAs for provisioning, availability, and performance, and any associated remedies. New approaches to reporting visibility, provision of inventory, and billing data. Support and other things such as proactive performance monitoring, including for broadband circuits. This is possible now in some cases. A whole new world in terms of commitments and how to best maximize flexibility in order to keep your leverage with your suppliers. Finally, clarity around pricing structures and in specific circuit pricing so that you can do fair comparisons. As mentioned, all these are ideally done by a competitive sourcing event. This should include your usual suspects, which are the national and global carriers, but also specialty aggregators that are emerging in this space. What you don't want to do is just call up your incumbent supplier and place orders. Okay. Thank you, Keith. And thank you as well, Mark. I think this has been a great discussion and it really does highlight why enterprises need to have a detailed understanding of what they have today and what they'll be buying to support the next generation network. If you would like to learn more about benchmarking and buying broadband services, Or if you have other ICT needs, you can contact Mark, Keith, me, or any of our LB3 and TC2 colleagues by giving us a call or shoot us an email. And you can also stay current by checking out our websites or follow us on LinkedIn.